Okay, so if you'd please kneel as far as you're able. Father in heaven, it is humbling to be representing your word tonight, and I pray that you would anoint my lips. Um, I pray that you would be glorified. I pray that each one of us would garner something from the words that you've given me to speak. Um, you are coming soon, and we need to be ready, as the song we just sung. Are we ready? Father, we need to put the world away. We ask that you would be with us with your spirit right now. You would comfort us. You would empower us to live for you. We ask this in your son's name, Yeshua. Amen. Okay. What is this? What? Please quiet. Agua. Okay. We've got some Espanol here. I have an ordinary glass of water. I'd like to know what your guesses are and what you think this weighs. Three and a half ounces. Four, four and a half. Six. What was that, Lene? Oh, six. Six, okay. Well, I've got to be perfectly honest. I have no idea how much it weighs. It really... It doesn't matter how much it weighs. My, my point with this illustration is if I hold it for a moment, no big deal. If I hold it for an hour, I'm probably going to get a sore arm. If I hold it all day long, you're probably going to have to call an ambulance. Is it true that the weight changed? It depended on how long I held it, didn't it? The, the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. So is it really possible that holding such a little thing as a glass of water could incapacitate a grown, strong man? True. It's true, right? But who would willingly hold on to something until they couldn't move their arm anymore? But I would venture to say that we do it every day. We do it automatically, and we do it without questioning it. It's part of our lifestyle. Inevitably, we will end up in a crisis. So what are these little things that we hang on to? There are hurts we receive from others, unresolved conflict, circumstances that perplex us. This is mine, too much to do in too little time. Worry, anxiety, poor attitudes, guilt, negative thinking, the needs and expectations of others. The list could go on and on, couldn't they? I'm sure you could pl add plenty to this list. We think that we have to hold on to these little glasses of water, that they're indispensable. Because if we don't, we're going to suffer dire consequences. Perhaps we've been in the habit of carrying them so long that they just seem to be a part of us. And we just accept their presence and the pain that accompanies holding on to them. And so what do we do? We end up in a mess. But what's the solution? Do we have to live our lives this way? trying to hold things together on the outside while we're hurting on the inside. So help me here with the solution. If you saw me holding this glass of water and my arm was killing me, what would you tell me to do? Come on, Eric. It's a no-brainer. Put it down, right? Okay, there we go. Drink it. I will probably do that a little later. It's nice, fresh, clear water. There's one more thing we need to do. What is that? Leave it there. Thank you, Sam. That's right. Leave it there. And believe it or not, it is just as simple as that with the other glasses of water we try to carry as well. The reason we don't find relief is because we try to manage stuff on our own. We want to run our own lives, to be in charge, to be in the, in the ones in control, and we think we can juggle this circumstance or this relationship and mix them all up with our attitudes and our habits and our history and our control, and no wonder we wear ourselves out. And you know what? All the while, the one who will never leave us or forsake us is standing right by our side, inviting us to rest our glasses of water in his loving hands. 
He bids us in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And I forgot to ask, did we get the handouts? Okay. So I, each night I've got a handout. It's simply what I've got up on the board. It's so you can take it home because um, there are some quotes that um, are not in the Bible that I'll be sharing with you. One great one tonight. Um, so she's going to gather those together for you. Um, but Matthew 18, 11, 28 to 30, it says, Come unto me, all ye that, are la uh, that labor and are heavy laden, and what? I will give you rest, right? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many love that verse? How many practice that verse every day? That's a few, a couple of hands. That, yep, simple enough, isn't it? Yes, it is. And the rest that is offered is as big as the God who offers it. Did you know that nothing is too great for him to handle? He holds the universe in place. And nothing is too small for him to notice. He notes every sparrow. This thing is giving me grief, sorry. He notes every sparrow and he numbers the hair of our heads. He is not indifferent to our needs. The Lord shows us pity and tender mercy and he is touched by our sorrows. And that our sorrows move his great heart of infinite love. There is no chapter, and this is true, I'm a, a living example of that, there's no chapter or experience in our life that is too dark for him to read. No perplexity that is too complicated for him to unravel. Has anybody experienced that? Something you just thought you couldn't get through and God worked it out? I hope everyone has experienced that. He sees our tears. Do you believe that? Oh, yes. He notes every sigh, and he notes our joys and sorrows, and we cannot weary him with our burden. He will uphold it. But our part is really simple. Come to him. He doesn't ask us to fix anything, adjust anything, or solve anything. He invites us to come just as we are and place ourselves under his management. The glass of water is still there, isn't it? But we no longer bear it alone. We enter into a coalition with the one who knows no fatigue. Anybody know no fatigue in this world? No, but he does. Human efforts begin to ally itself with divine power. He directs and I implement. He leads, I follow. Have any of you ever seen this bumper sticker? This one drives me nuts. If God's the co-pilot, who's flying the plane? We are, right? And I found the bumper sticker that is the correct bumper sticker. And here it is. Yeah. If God is the co-pilot, switch seats. <laughs> if God's not the pilot, we're going to crash, right? right? He suggests new thoughts to my mind. I switch channels. My glass of water, if it is negative thinking, God will direct me to think positive thoughts. As I choose to cooperate, as I what? Choose. We have to make a choice to cooperate with him. He takes the stress out of whatever I am facing and replaces it with rest. Unfortunately, setting down our glass of water is not a one-time necessity. We may have laid it down yesterday. We may have laid it down five minutes ago. But we find ourselves gripping it again. When did we pick it up? It happens so easily and automatically. Mastering the setting down of our glasses of water is the work of a lifetime. And I'm still learning. I'm going to share a story, a little bit more of our testimony. About 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago, my wife and I, when we were first married, before we had our own children, we had three little ones come into our life that we were hoping to adopt. And it was a really serious roller coaster of going to court meetings with the mother and the chil of the children and ourselves having to go. Every three to six months, we had to go to this court. Every court meeting, there was anticipation as to whether the children would go back to their mother or not. 
The children at that time had been living with us for over two years, so they were just like our own children. To be honest, looking back, we grow in our walk, but it was hard to find peace during that time. I know that we were certainly not setting down our glasses of water. We were doing so many things in our own strength. We weren't, I can't say we weren't drawing upon God's strength, but I think we were doing a lot of it in our own strength. We wanted to make sure that that judge knew how rotten of a living condition it would be if those kids went back to their mother. I can remember the next to last court meeting that we had in the case the judge, and I, I can see it in my mind's eye as plain as day, he looked at the mother and he says, you are going to have to make the earth move if you want your children back. She had been given a list of directives that she needed to accomplish. She'd done almost none. But I truly believe because we were trying to make all this happen in our own strength, and I'm only going to find this out when I get to heaven, that the people involved with the case, the caseworkers, the judge, the advocate for the children, decided we were probably meddling too much. And at the last court meeting, this is three months later, after the court, where he said, you're going to make the earth move to get your kids back, three months later, the same judge looked at the mother, and he said, well, if you do a couple of these things, we'll get your kids back to you. Yeah. And that was the same case or the same court date that we were asked to leave the courtroom. And as we left the courtroom, the caseworker stopped us after the court hearing and said the children are going back today. Yeah. We pleaded with the caseworker, could you give us a couple of days to say goodbye? Get their things together? And she allowed us to do that. Praise the Lord. And the children did go back. It was a mess. The two girls were abused in ways I'm not going to describe. And the lives that the children live now are horrible. The disgust that they were put through has affected them for their life. And I pray that the Lord will forgive us for not setting down our glasses of water I have no idea if the situation would have turned out differently had we not tried to push and make, take the matters into our own hands. And we may never know the side of heaven. I do know it was a heart-wrenching experience. And I do know that we had mostly no peace during the process. Now, I want to fast forward 17 years. We had another little one come into our life that we hoped to adopt. My wife loves kids, in case you didn't know that. The situation with the mother was very similar. It was a very bad situation. I won't go into the details, but let's just say this little one had guardian angels watching over her. We initially came into this little one's uh, contact with this little one's mother through a church friend. The time that we met the mother, she was pregnant, and due to her living situation, knew she would most likely not be able to keep and raise the child. So she was open to having us adopt this little one. The mother did have the baby, and she ended up giving, getting government assistance, and she found out she had her meal ticket. A year and a half goes by, and it began to dawn on us that mom is no longer really interested in having us adopt the children. And I want to add something at this point. When we found out about adopting this little one, we prayed that God would let her be a girl and that she would be healthy. You see, mom was a meth addict. The likelihood of birth problems was quite high. My wife even prayed that the little girl would have brown hair and brown eyes. And God is good, she did. She was a healthy little girl with a full head of brown hair. All of our other biological kids were bald, so that was unusual. And she had beautiful brown eyes. God wants to give the desires of our heart to us, to his children. But when the child was a year and a half, we had a decision to make. The mother had closed the door for us to adopt. We had a glass of water. What were we going to do with it? Would we hold on to it until we were incapacitated? 
Or could we let our loving Heavenly Father carry it for us? We struggled. Lord, you answered our prayers, right? She's a girl, she's healthy, she's brown-haired, brown eyes. Surely you want us to adopt her, right? Flashback to 17 years earlier, stirred our emotions. The loss of the three little ones was devastating. We can't bear to go through this again. Wait, let's set the glass of water down. Lord, this is your child. Lord, you're in control. Lord, all things work together for good for those that love you. Here, Lord, can you take this burden for us? And he did. And at a year and a half into this process, we felt led to cut the ties with the mother and the child because it was too painful to watch what was going on. But there was a peace. The Lord had a plan. We didn't understand it at the time, but God is in control at all times. Seven months later, we're in the process of selling our house, had already sold many of our belongings, and we were preparing to go to India to help start a school. When we get a phone call, if you want this little girl, you need to be a meeting at a meeting this afternoon. Lord, really? Is it true? There was no question what we were to do. We had prayed for this little girl, and the Lord had brought her back into our life. We could not leave the state of Washington because we were adopting it through the state but it was a no-brainer. The Lord would work out the details, and there were many details. There's a whole other sermon that I'm not going to get into that the Lord worked out. It was incredible. But we knew we were to take care of this little girl, period. We had prayed and prayed and prayed for her, and for her to come back into our life was providence. We had no other choice but to drop everything and go get this little girl. We went to the meeting that afternoon and took 21-month-old Hannah home with us. But we still had a glass of water. Yes, she had been removed from the horrible living conditions, but the mother had a year to get her act together and be able to get her child back. Oh, Lord, here we go again. You know the living conditions. We need to let the people involved know how horrible those conditions are. And the answer came back, Eric and Brenda, do you trust me? Do you think I can take care of this for you? Of course, Lord, but they need to know, right? The Lord would reply gently, My children, do you think that I can let them know? You're right, Lord, please forgive us. So the court process began. I was the only one that went to the meetings because it was too hard for Brenda to go. The pain of the past lay afresh. With every hearing, we had to make a choice to lay our glasses of water down Lord, they need to know that she can't go back to her mother. And as we prayed, the Lord directed us. And you know what he said? I, I remember it clearly. He said, it is my decision whether or, not, whether or not this child stays in your home or whether she goes home. Your job is to love that child, period. Leave the results to me. But Lord, you've answered our prayers. She's healthy and a girl and brown hair and brown eyes, Right? Surely she's meant to be ours. Answer, and the peace came back. Love her and leave the results to me. The glass of water was picked up and put down and picked up and put down and picked up and put down. But the Lord gave us, this is an amazing part of the story. It was a struggle because we had gone through this 17 years earlier. When Brenda was struggling, I was strong. When I was struggling, Brenda was strong. The Lord knew. He worked it out. We were able to strengthen one another by the Lord's strength. And the Lord did control the circumstances. Hannah became our officially adopted daughter at the age of four. Many times through the process, the Lord had to remind us that there was much refining still needed in our lives. The Lord is talking to each one of us. He is telling us it's all about character. I love you so much that I want you to experience the freedom from the dross that still clings to your soul deep within. I'm thorough and I'm patient. I'll keep allowing trials to dig deeper and deeper until the dross is all gone and then I can place my seal upon your forehead. Like 
like to share a couple of pictures with you. This first picture is a picture of a peaceful cabin resting. Can I get a Kleenex by chance, somebody? Please? Sorry. Thank you. This, the first picture is a peaceful cabin resting in the beautiful mountains with a serene stream running by. No disturbance, no clamor, no threat. Perfect rest. Or is this actually a picture of perfect rest? I'm going to pull up another picture. Thank you. Appreciate it. It gets to me every time I tell this story. Sorry. Now, the second picture, you're not probably going to be able to see it, but right, my, it's not showing up on the laser, right in the center of that picture of that turbulent waterfall is a mother bird with her babies wedged precariously in, in the rocks in between the uh, waterfall. Now, the first picture is the rest that we find in quieting down and controlling all of my circumstances. The second picture, and I think the more important picture, is the rest promised by Christ that is independent of circumstances. Do you see the difference? This picture is a perfect example of the kind of peace and rest the Lord wants to grant us. Is it beautiful? This is the kind of peace and rest the Savior wants to grant us with. Christ himself said, apart from the Father, I can do nothing. Here is Christ in the midst of the storm, relying on his heavenly Father in the very same way that we can. We can have peace in the middle of a storm. Do you believe that? Amen. The Lord says to us, in the world, you might have tribulation. Thank you. You will have tribulation. I like to put it this way. If you become a Christian, you just got a bullseye on your back. The enemy's aiming for. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Wouldn't you like to give me this little glass of water and let me carry it for you? The story goes Hudson Taylor. He was a pioneer missionary from inland China. And he learned the secret well. He often ended his long days by playing his favorite hymn, Jesus, Jesus, I am resting, resting, on his little reed organ. Once, when letters reached him of serious threats that threatened the lives of his fellow missionaries, he began whistling that familiar song. Surprised, one of his workers exclaimed, how can you whistle when our friends are in such danger? And Hudson Taylor answered back, would you have me be troubled and anxious? That would not help them, and it would certainly incapacitate me for my work. I have to roll the burden on the Lord and just do what he asks me to do. Throughout life, we may need to find our rest again and again. Has anybody experienced that? Yes. yes. We must be deliberate about it. But with each passing trial that comes into our life, as we set our glass of water down... It becomes easier and easier each time. As we allow the Lord to carry the burden that he invites us to give him, we realize that we can trust him and that we can lean on him. Does anybody trust the Lord? I didn't hear any answers. Amen. Amen. Thank you. First Peter 5, 7. Cast some of your cares on him because he cares for you. Oh, okay, thank you. So what are our glasses of water? Is it the evil that surrounds us every day? Is it the bills that keep piling up? Is it the loss of your job? Is it your child or children who have turned away from the Lord? Is it your coworker, neighbor, or family member who mocks your Christianity? Is it your marriage that seems to be on the rocks? Is it that cancer that is ravaging through your loved one's blood? Is it the lack of peace that you struggle with because you don't really know if you can trust the Lord or if he even hears you? When I changed the slide, it's a reading I found probably four or five years ago, and it really struck me. It's on your handout as well. Um, I'm going to read through it, and I hope it blesses you as much as it did me. God is. God is Lord Almighty, omnipotent King, Lion of Judah, Rock of Ages, Prince of Peace, King of kings, Lord of lords, provider, protector, paternal leader, ruling lord, and reigning king of all the universe. He is father, he is helper, he is guardian, and he is God. He is the first and last, the beginning and the end. 
He is the keeper of creation and the creator of all he keeps, the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, and he always will be unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and bought healing. He was pierced and eased pain. He was persecuted and bought freedom. He was dead and bought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him. And the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The people couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. The New Age can't replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. He is light, love, longevity, and Lord. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He is holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and pure. His ways are right. His word is eternal. His will is unchanging, and his mind is on me. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my guide. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my comfort. He is my Lord, and he rules my life. I serve him because his bond is love. His burden is light, and his goal for me is abundant life. I follow him because he is the wisdom of the wise, the power of the powerful, the ancient of days, the ruler of rulers, the leader of leaders, the overseer of the overcomers, and the sovereign Lord of all that was and is and is to come. And if that seems impressive to you, try this on for size. His goal is a relationship with me. He will never leave me, never forsake me, never mislead me, never forget me, never overlook me, and never cancel my appointment in his appointment book. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm lost, he is the way. When I'm afraid, he is my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I'm hurt, he heals me. When I'm broken, he mends me. When I'm blind, he leads me. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I face trials, he is with me. When I face persecution, he fortifies me. When I face problems, he comforts me. When I face loss, he provides for me. And when I face death, he will come and carry me home. He is everything for everybody, everywhere, every time, in every way. He is God. He is faithful. I am his, and he is mine. My Father in heaven can whip the father of this world. And so if you're wondering why I feel so secure, understand this. He said it. I believe it. And that settles it. God is in control. I'm on his side. And that means all is well with my soul. Every day is a blessing. Amen. There are so many glasses of water that could be listed that it would take all night. But there's a big God that is bigger than our glasses of water. People, it is time to set this down and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I don't understand the circumstances, but I know you, and I know you're going to get me through it. No matter what comes into my life, I know that you can handle it. I know you can give me the peace needed to go through it. So here's my challenge. If any of you are struggling with putting a glass of water down, or have struggled, I want you to realize that your loving Savior is there waiting to take that burden for you. And if that's the case, if you've ever struggled or you are struggling, I would like you to stand as we pray and ask God to help us to lay our glasses of water in his loving care. Father, forgive us for not trusting you. Lord, I thank you for the peace that you can give to each one of us. I pray that you would help us to recognize that there is no burden that is too big for you. And I pray that we wouldn't wait until we're at the end of our rope to turn this over to you. That we would recognize you are in control at all times. Father, thank you so much that you tell us your burden is light if we would just make the choice to let you lead and let you take over our problems because we've been the manager and we did a pretty pitiful job. You know, most of us are many Christians. They want to serve you as an advisor. That's how we want to serve you. 
Help us not to do that, Father. Just help us to come to the foot of the cross and lay it down. And we thank you for what you're going to do, especially as time is so short. We're going to have to rely on you even more and more. And we ask that you would give us the strength to persevere. We ask this in your son's name, Yeshua. In his loving name we pray. Amen.